Well, today we're going to visit a uh, fantastic maker space in Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, my home maker space, a place that I helped start some years ago, and I'm very proud to continue to be a member of, at least when I'm in town, I try to spend a little bit of time there. Uh, the place is called Making Awesome. It's located on the east side of Tallahassee, off Industrial Plaza Drive. It's a, um, you know, it's it's in its name. It's awesome. <laughs> Making awesome. Tallahassee's uh, community maker space. Like makerspaces, fab labs, and other organizations of similar kind throughout the world, Making Awesome is a place where people can come and make things. Uh, it, so many people these days have live in small spaces, don't have uh, don't have room at their own homes or apartments for a, for any kind of a tool room or any kind of a lab. Um, Making Awesome provides space, uh, provides places to work, and it provides access to some very very cool tools in addition to having classes and the most important thing is it provides a community of folks who like to work together and work on projects. Courtney Nestor organizes the various classes at Making Awesome. Um, so right now we have um, the classes that we need to have to for people to uh, so we have one on the glow forge because that's an easy one to break <laughs> there's it's an easy one to break and there's a couple of cleaning procedures that we want to be sure we show people every time they use it yeah. um and then we can't add, we you can't use it without being added as a user mm -hmm. um and we're looking at um the same process for a couple other things but mm -hmm. we haven't instituted it so that's one of those classes and then we have classes for the cricket and the heat press we do that in the same class mm -hmm. Um, we do 3D printer classes. Um, Jewelry Lab has been doing stacking rings, mm -hmm. uh, a nice intro class. And they're doing a they're doing a, a metal a metal clay class too coming up I hear. Oh, that was I took one before I started on the board. I took that class and it was so much fun. I had, I loved it. Bit. Expensive class of it because that material's not inexpensive. Yeah, it was worth it though. Like you definitely leave with like a little like probably half of your material so left. Here I'm actually experimenting today. I've got bamboo printers at home and they, if you use a bamboo printer you know it creates a lot of what they call poop yeah. um, for color changes. So one of the things I've been working on is other creative ways to reuse failed prints, uh -huh. the, etc. Um, and it's all it's all the same kind of filament, all the yeah, same Yeah, this material. is all PLA filament and mm -hmm. I actually have the material data sheets on them to know that it's safe to do what I'm yeah. doing in the heat. Um, yeah. So basically I've been able to just throw a whole bunch of them on here and press them into sheets, yeah. which again from checking the data sheet I knew it, it was laser safe so then I was cutting some things out of it on the laser but mm -hmm. it's hard to get it flat enough to sit really correctly in the laser so what I'm trying now is I printed just an exterior external ring as a gauge basically yeah. yeah and basically i'm just going to fill the middle of it with it and hope that cool. will sort of keep it you know, a, a lot of our class focuses are are on more introductory level classes yeah um so you know think of it you know your kid comes home they have a 3d printer at school and you know if they want to learn a little bit more about it you know we can we teach an introduction to tinkercad which is what they they use for a lot of the stem programs we teach the introduction for how to use the printer it's like yeah. For most tasks, it's that first five percent is the scary part. You know, you're like, I got this 3D printer. What do I do with it? To okay, now and I know not, how to not jam it. Yeah, I know how to load the filament. Yeah, and that's yeah. we we do hands on. We make you load the filament because there's there's a touch to it.
I'm Tom Albanese. I'm a longtime Tallahassee resident. I've been a member here oh, about six or eight months. Um, I've been fooling primarily here with the Creality 3D printers, mm -hmm. and uh, they're kind of fun to work with. And uh, they're, and they're a little bit higher end than the uh, the Enders we have. Is that right? Or no, these are, the Enders are what I'm working with. Okay. The, these three that are in oh, here. Oh, these are Enders also. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and the ones in there are also. There are uh, those are uh, Prusas. Those the, Prusas. The Prusas oh, okay, I see. And they're uh, to fo to fool with these, you you need to be able to tinker with them. The, the Prusas you can pretty much just load and go. Load and go. Yeah. It, it's really rewarding. Um, things like uh, uh, I have some other cameras and. Uh, and you're, you're a uh, photography enthusiast and yes, a collector. Yes, right. And, uh, you know, some things are unavailable. Uh, rear lens caps for an exact amount. Mm -hmm. What's really nice is you just go online and you go to a site like this uh, Thingiverse and uh, somebody's already built the model. You just download it and print it. But it's nice to be able to, to print just about anything you want. Um, my understanding now on the space shuttle, they've got a 3D printer. Yes, they do. And instead yeah. of... Uh, Instead of shipping parts up, they just send STL. Set an, up an STL file and, and yeah. let them print it away. Yeah, so. and show yeah there. little um, little spoons and forks to make the rings, and then the the dinner flatware for the bracelets. And I found these cute little thimbles sterling thimbles yeah. that yeah. I thought I'd um, turn into a jewelry piece. And here's like a couple of the little rings I've made from mm -hmm. the. And here's the leftover tines, and <laughs> I don't know. I'll do something with this. I just don't know what yet. Woodchop 2 is more the, the smaller making. Uh, and so we have uh, our scroll saws. So we've got the DeWalt, and we've got the, I think uh, it's a Ryobi over there. It could be a, uh, something else. Uh, and then we have a small bandsaw. Uh, we have grinders. We have sanders. Uh, and we have a handful of hand tools over here. Uh, then we also have our CNC machine, our X-Carve. Um, you know, X-Carves are wonderful. They're really easy to, you know, sort of do amazing designs, basically design it very easily on a user-friendly uh, interface, and then you hit go, and next thing you know, you have a, a sign that took you a whole five minutes to, <laughs> you typed out the letter. So we have two lasers. We've got the, um, the Glowforge, and then we've got the Omtech. The Omtech is more... Uh, industrial like that's more plug and play uh, the and but and when I say plug and play it totally is I, I mean you those weren't fancy graphic files they dragged over oh, a that's, that's a brief tour of making awesome and some of the people who are involved in the space who help uh, who help the space grow who use the space for different things um, if, if we've kind of uh, you know, cause you to become interested in this particular makerspace. Uh, the uh, address is on the screen. If you would go to uh, info at makingawesome.org and uh, just send them an email saying, hey, I'm interested, when can I come by and see it? Somebody will get back to you and arrange to give you a tour of the space, like the one that William was giving to a couple of visitors when I was able to you know, follow him along for a few minutes of his tour. Uh, now, we didn't see everything. Uh, you saw a little bit of the 3D printers, a little bit of the jewelry lab, one of two uh, wood shops. You didn't see the, the, the uh, larger wood shop downstairs, which has uh, kind of the heavier duty equipment, table saw and um, platers and joiners and uh, big sanders, big belt sanders and things like that. It's kind of for furniture making. So, uh, you know, you saw kind of the, the smaller space upstairs with the more sophisticated machines, the CNC machines and so on. Um, you didn't see the bicycle repair shop, which is a new shop that's uh, just getting started. You didn't see the uh, photographic studio uh, with uh, all kinds of backdrops and lighting and, uh, and a dark room, which is currently under construction for those are, who are really into analog. So. <laughs> A lot of cool stuff is happening at Making Awesome, and more stuff is coming. You know, the, as new members come and old members move on, uh, people come with new interests, and uh, the, space, uh, the space reconfigures itself because it's a dynamic space. It's a bargain, um, and um, I hope if you are in uh, the area they serve, which is around Tallahassee, Florida, and North Florida, or if you're a visitor and passing through town and want to see it, you'll give them a holler and see if you can stop by to say hello. Um, this is Dave Brightbill. I do these kinds of uh, videos and makerspaces around the world, actually. I've uh, got one that I'm working on right now, and 
I have another one scheduled for a few weeks from now in, a, in another country. So uh, I hope that you, uh, if you're interested in makerspaces or the other things that I talk about on this channel, you'll, you know, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Make me feel validated. Well, that's it from, uh, from this apartment, which is actually, I'm actually in Italy where I, when I'm recording this. But uh, I hope that uh, you uh, have enjoyed this and I hope that, uh, that if you've got something that you want to make, you'll either uh, come check out Making Awesome or find a maker space wherever you are because they are all over the world and uh, I've been to a lot of them. So from, uh, from you know, my, my uh, temporary apartment in Turin, Italy, I hope that um, life is good for you.